Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter, and I kind of have an announcement. So for the past four years, I've been in grad school, also known as HE Double Hockey Sticks. I had been looking for a job for about over a year, and I had a few interviews, and then one day I got a very exciting phone call. Hi, this is a little bit weird, right? I'm like mid-working out, I've removed all my makeup. I just got a really exciting phone call that I got a job that I interviewed for. I've been in the process of looking for a job for about a year, um, and it is such a relief that I got a, a real job. So I get to move out of my parents' house, which I'm very excited about, but it does mean that I have to move with my entire typewriter collection. Now the thing about this job is that it's about three and a half hours away from where I was living at the time in my parents house and I've been filming videos there for a year. I was taking the year off to write my dissertation and once I had that done I was ready to go and do this new job so I had to move everything I own about three and a half hours away. Now I'm moving to a new place but I'm also kind of getting into decor which is new for me. For the first time ever I'll actually be able to display my typewriters instead of stacking them in corners all over the house and hoping nobody notices. So I've been watching a ton of Architectural Digest touring celebrity homes. I've been watching a ton of Vogue wondrous objects videos and I've been watching a lot of furniture flipping on Instagram which is incredibly dangerous for me to be watching because it gives me ideas and that's a bad idea. So what I actually wanted to do when furnishing this apartment is I wanted to think about things like how can I get secondhand furniture, vintage furniture that I can really love and do things with and I'm not going to feel so bad because I didn't spend as much money on it but it also kind of matches that whole vintage typewriter collector aesthetic. I spent weeks and weeks and weeks on Facebook Marketplace looking for things to furnish my apartment. Things like tables and chairs and desks and bed frames. And I really got to go through some of the interesting processes of a little bit of furniture restoration. For example, I found this table on Facebook Marketplace and when we got it, uh, we had to actually polyurethane it and protect it and seal it in. So I ended up sanding this table and sealing it in with polyurethane. I had some stains on the top and it took it right off. Yeah. That's right. You should probably videotape they yourself. They should sponsor me, shouldn't they? Oh gosh, you are videotaping yourself. Hi! <laughs> Look at that simple green goat. Wow, it's amazing! I can't believe it! That's incredible! You should videotape it! <laughs> now, this normally is a very stressful process, but it's also an incredibly stressful process when you have to move 30 large typewriters and you don't know what you're gonna do with them. So I'm about two weeks out from moving and I've started to put things in boxes. <laughs> um, right now everything is just kind of stored in my room haphazardly. I don't know if you can tell but it's a mess in here. But I've been trying to put everything in boxes and then I've been trying to label them. So for example, I've packaged up my typewriter lamp. That's in here. This one has office decor hopefully my address is not any of these but i'm moving so you'll never know but i've got <laughs> all this furniture in here this chair i got on facebook marketplace for ten dollars it is the most amazing chair ever i adore it um but this chair is too big for this tiny room so i will be happy to get out of here but because i have nowhere else to store everything it's all just kind of piled up in my room one of the tips I have for packing typewriters, and I'm not an expert by any means, but I've watched some videos and I'm going to link down below the most helpful packing video I've seen, which is actually from Tampa Typewriter, Jack, who showed how he packs typewriters. What you want to do is make sure that you set the margins to the middle so that carriage doesn't have any room to travel while it's being knocked around in a case or if it's a standard machine in a box. So you want to set both your margins to the middle so the carriage has very little room to travel. You also want to wrap anything that could break. So I'm thinking about things like platen knobs. Those are kind of hard to replace. So I wrapped all of my platen knobs in bubble wrap. I also used this like amazing saran wrap material. I don't know what it is, but I found it at Walmart and I adore it. It's so much fun. But I also used that to then double wrap the bubble wrap so it would stay in place. And I also made sure that I was wrapping things like the carriage arm into place so it wouldn't 
like throw itself out and whack somebody else in the head. I also wanted to make sure I was protecting, especially on my standard machines because they weren't in a case, the front portion of them. So anywhere underneath the keyboard where they could chip paint, especially on things that I had repainted like my Monster Royal 10. So I also wrapped those in bubble wrap. Now, my portables were going to be transported in the U-Haul on the back of my dad's car, who was thankfully moving the U-Haul for me, but these standards I wanted to move on my own, so I packed them in the trunk of my 27-year-old car. After I bubble wrapped every single one of my standards, and I only had about six, thank goodness, I was able to put them in the trunk of my car. I was able to fit five in there. Now I buffered all of these typewriters with pillows and blankets and curtains. So I put pillows in the back of the car and on the sides of the car to protect the machines from the internal portion of the trunk. Then I also put curtains and blankets in between the rows of typewriters. So I was buffering those internal pieces. The other thing I did was in the front row I had three machines. I put the two on the sides facing forward and I put the one in the middle facing the other direction. So if anything did happen to the carriage it was only gliding over the keys of the other not directly hitting the platens of the other machines. And I did end up having to put my Monster Royal 10 in the back seat because he didn't fit in the trunk and I also buffered him with more blankets and bubble wrap. Now one thing I didn't think about was how much heavier this would make my car and about 40 minutes into the drive to my new location, I was going the day before, the car check engine light went off. And I've had a lot of trouble with my car in the past and I got really scared. I pulled over, I checked the internal portions of the car, I checked the serpentine belt because I've had that go out before and my power steering and everything looked okay. What we actually determined was once I got here and unloaded all the typewriters from the car, a sensor went off that said, hey, your car's too heavy. So apparently the limit for transporting typewriters in a 27 year old car over three and a half hours hours is less than six standard typewriters. I almost forgot to pack my mug. So the moving truck will be here in an hour, two hours, and I have to pack all this stuff in it. It's a lot of stuff. All of my typewriters are here, but I have four fewer typewriters than I thought I did, which is slightly concerning. I don't know how my math was so bad. Also, I was loading my typewriters into the car, and I cut my thumb on a piece of auto glass because my window got crushed in February and we replaced it. But apparently I still had glass in my car, so I cut my thumb open on it, which was lots of fun. I am so exhausted. I didn't film packing most of the truck for a lot of reasons. Mostly once my dad got home, it was just kind of like, hurry up, throw every piece of furniture in the truck. I didn't have time to grab a camera or anything. Um, but it's okay, it would have been mostly my butt going in and out of the truck. So, I packed most of the truck. I have just a little bit of space left here at the front for the rest of these things. I also picked some of the typewriters to go in the U-Haul. There are certain machines that I need transported in the car. Things like my Barbies, which don't have a ton of protection to them. My Adler doesn't have a case currently, so I packaged that up in a box and that's going in the car. So there are certain things that I wanted protected by the car, but some of the machines in my collection have really good solid wooden cases or really sturdy plastic cases. So those are the ones I'm going to try to put in the U-Haul here. I'm packing them in here because I don't want any space. I don't want any piece of furniture, any box to slide a ton. And typewriters are really great for putting in space. And the less space they have to slide, the less likely that they are to get jostled around. So I'm going to pack up the rest of this and then maybe call it for the night. I am so tired. <laughs> but. Uh, I will be really buff in a couple days after doing all of this carrying. So um, let's pack the last few things in this truck and uh, move on from there. <laughs> well, it's packed, I think. I still have this in my room, but that is tomorrow Sarah's problem because 
Today Sarah is really tired. <laughs> my last morning in my parents' house and uh, someone decided I wasn't allowed to leave. My dad is a very wise man who once said, don't ever have a hobby that you can't carry. So I just unloaded six standards out of my car because no one else is coming till tomorrow with the rest of my stuff. So I'm tired. And my check engine light turned on while driving here, so that's fun. First meal in the new apartment, pizza. So I just woke up from my first night in the apartment. I actually slept, which is good, uh, but I don't have any furniture yet or a bed. It's very echoing in here, and um, I slept in a nest that I made on the floor out of curtains and blankets and pillows, so. Hopefully I'll have my bed in here soon. The next day my parents showed up with their U-Haul and all of the rest of my stuff. And I didn't get to film much of that because it was a little crazy. But just know, we moved about 30 typewriters then into my apartment. What's also kind of cool here is at the same time, the guy was setting up my internet and he walked into my living room where I had placed all of these standard typewriters and went, do you use those? It turns out he was actually an artist and he was really interested in how people use typewriters for art. So I did direct him to some typewriter artists, including James Cook and Jeremy May, which are not Jeremy May, Jeremy Mayer. Jeremy May is on Top Gear, the sculptor guy. And I thought that was kind of a cool way to just introduce typewriters. I'm already in a new place and I'm already the typewriter girl. So there are all the typewriters in a row. I brought in these standards last night from my car. All of these portables were basically in the back of my dad's car. A testament to the holiday case on the Smith Corona, actually. My mom, now this was done beforehand, but my mom dropped this out of the back of the car and it was totally fine. All we did was get a little smudge here on the side, but the typewriter was totally fine. It wasn't even jostled around in there. So a testament to the holiday case on the portables from Smith Corona. But here are all the typewriters and they all made it safely and unharmed. So thankfully all of my typewriters have made it to their new destination safely. I've checked all of them and they're all totally still in working order, thank goodness, even the one that we dropped coming out of the car. Now, moving with typewriters is stressful. If you can put them in the back of your car rather than in a truck of some kind, it's probably better. But if you don't have any other options, it's really important to make sure that you're buffering the typewriters in any way you can. That includes bubble wrapping. I would set all of your margins to center so that carriage doesn't travel, even if it's in a case. And I would also encourage you to just think about any vibrations that might happen while you're driving. Vibrations can be bad for a typewriter as well, especially in a U-Haul. The U-Haul is like jittering up and down the whole time. So think about maybe setting something under your typewriters in between them. That way they're kind of protected and buffered from all of that different motion and action inside the machine. Another thing I've been looking at a lot online, which I shouldn't be doing, is vintage things on both Etsy and eBay. I was looking for things to kind of add some really cute little details to my home. I wanted things that were vintage that made it feel a little bit more lived in, a little bit quirky. I took a style quiz online and found out that my style is eclectic, which makes sense. So I wanted to look for some vintage pieces that I could also add to my home. And I found some of these objects. This is kind of like Vogue's objects of affection. I purchased some things that I just think are really cute little details that I wanted to share with you because I'm excited about them. So one of the things I was thinking about is I just stained all these tables and I need to make sure I protect them from all of the coffee that I drink. And I actually found some really cute coffee coaster sets from the 1950s. So I went on kind of a binge on eBay and Etsy and I found some really cute coaster sets from the 1950s. So I purchased myself one and it's just like a little speaker stand that has coasters in it, but mine is also a music box, which I thought was really cute. And so I got so excited about this one that I actually went and found one for my sister. She's a music teacher as is her boyfriend and they're moving into their apartment. So I got them one shaped like a piano from the 1950s that also is a coaster set. It's just so cute and it makes me so happy. Another thing I purchased is in this box and we're gonna open it and hope it made it safely here to the new location out of the U-Haul cause it's kind of fragile. Oh my God, it's so cute. 
So one thing I've been thinking about is displaying things in my home and I get a lot of postcards from pen pals. I was in post crossing for a while and I got postcards from all over the world and anytime I travel I like to get a postcard from where I've been. It's kind of this cool collection that I'm starting of all these different places. Everywhere has a postcard. Really easy thing to pick up and travel with. So I've been collecting those for a bit and I wanted to be able to display some in my home and I ran into these 19 50s porcelain postcard desk holders. They have a little spot in the front for stamps where you'd put like a little wet sponge in here to lick your stamps. Some of them had pens coming out of their bums as their tails. And then in the middle they have this coil that you can stick letters in or postcards, which is what I'm gonna do. And I was looking for one of these to add to my collection and put on my shelf so I could showcase some of these things. They have things that are poodles, they have a bunch of cats. I went with this little black cat because I thought it was really cute. And I'm really excited to have that in my home. Just like a really simple little vintage touch that is just a little bit quirky and out there and very much on trend with me. I had the distinct pleasure of being messaged by somebody on Instagram who is an artist. I'm going to link her Etsy shop down below, but she asked if she could paint a portrait of one of the photos I had posted on Instagram featuring my best friend Diamond and one of my typewriters. And I kind of forgot that she had messaged me, but then a few months later, she actually tagged me in a post where she had done this painting. So I'll try to get it here without getting a glare. So that's my best friend Diamond and one of my typewriters. That's actually my brother Wizard True Type typewriter. I was so excited and I found a gold frame for it just to make it a little bit more bougie. But it just captures Diamond's personality so well and she wasn't able to move with me. She's an older dog and I didn't want to change up her routine too much and also she would have to pass an interview with the landlord and as cute as she is on the internet, she does not like people. <laughs> So I didn't think she'd pass the interview, but I was really excited to be able to bring a little bit of diamond here with me into my new home. I just think it's the most gorgeous painting and I'm really just honored to have it. And I will link down below her Etsy shop. She does some amazing artwork and I know she's also painted some other people's pets and typewriters here on the typewriter collectors universe. So check her out. She's linked down in the description. I'm just so honored to have this piece of artwork here in my new home. So that was me moving with 30 typewriters. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different, but it was a really intensive process. And I'm now in a new location. I will have a new filming setup soon. And I'm really excited to try doing some typewritery things in a new place. If you're interested in more typewriter content, I also have more YouTube videos on this channel. And I also have an Instagram at just typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for joining me today and remind you that you're just my type writer. By the power of movie magic, all of these boxes are actually empty.